finally, Team MLE football is returning. It's been a while, but we are ready to do this. Back for another episode of Team MLE Talk. And joining me today, my good friend and Team MLE expert, Kiarash Mahdavi, joining me all the way from the Netherlands. Kiarash, good to have you on the show. How's it going? Hello, Arash. Very happy to be here. It's been a while. I'm very excited to be on the show and especially to see Tim and Lee playing again after almost a year of not having seen them playing. So, yeah, thanks for having me on the show and let's get started. Absolutely. As we know, Iran will be uh, playing friendly matches against um, the first before mentioning Uzbekistan. Let's just call it the Central Asian Derby because this is one of the teams that Iran always plays basically every year. And they also will be playing Mali. And of course, like I said, Kiarash, always a pleasure to have you on the show. So let's go ahead and get started. This is something we've all been waiting for for a long time. And Iran head coach Dragan Skocic has finally had that opportunity to say, hey, these are my list. These are my 23 players I'm calling up for upcoming matches. So Going to read those names off real quick, starting with the goalkeeper position. Payam Niazman, Amir Abedzadeh, and, Rash and Rashid Mazaheri. As for the center backs, Majida Hosseini, Hossein Kanani, Shoja Khalilzadeh, and Aref Golami. And as for the wing backs, Sadek Muharami, Milad Mohammadi, Moshtaba Najarian, Siamak Nemati. Now for the midfielders, Esana Hatsafi, Ali Karimi, Ahmad Nurolahi, and Omide Nurafkan. As for the attacking midfielders and wingers, Ali Golizadeh, Saman Goldus, Mehdi Gayedi, Fahide Amiri, and Mehdi Torabi. And our strikers up front, Sardara Azmoun, Mehdi Tarami, and Kave Rezai. So a lot of ground for us to cover, Kiarash. But let's just start off with the basics first. And that is, which player do you think deserves to start in goal for these, for these upcoming friendly matches? Like, who would be your well, number choice right now based on those three keepers? First of all, thank you for sharing uh, the list. Uh, very interesting names. But to answer your first question, well, that's a very interesting one because, in my opinion, Epic Study has been gaining form towards the end of the last season and ever since this game, to me, seems to be improving. Um, the for performance, for example, against Porto last night was a great example. He uh, had an outstanding game uh, with a penalty save to top it all off in the dying minutes to take home the three points for Maritimo in a very hard game in, against Porto, where Tormi also played. So, based on that, I definitely think he should be starting over Niasman in the upcoming friendlies, at least one of them. Although I heard that Niazman has been doing well domestically in uh, our own league, so he also deserves credit. But at the point, I also do think he's not far behind Abed Sade. So together with Bayron Vent, who is unfortunately uh, injured, um, there's a lot of healthy competition between the Timely goalkeepers. And I think that will help us uh, to get stronger. So yeah, I think Abed Sade will start in at least one of these friendlies. I got to go with Amir Abedzadeh as well. You know, he played well to end um, la the previous season with Maritimo and right now to start the season in the Portuguese Primera Liga. He's, he's on very good form. So right now it's, a, it's an easy decision for me to say that Amir Abedzadeh should be starting. I mean, of course, you know, Ali Reza Bayraman is injured. But like we said, based on the three players that, are, that have been called up, based on the three goalkeepers that have been called up by Dragan Skocic, right now, of course, I got to go with Amir Abedzadeh as well. Now, yes. now the next thing to mention, now the next thing I want to talk about, you know, whenever we take a look at the list of players, you know, like all TMLE fans, we're, we're waiting for that list. I mean, we really have been waiting a long time for this. And, you know, whenever that list comes out, we're always wanting to see, you know, like we always want to talk about which players we're happy to see on the list, which ones we're not happy to see on the list, or, you know, which ones are, you know, total head scratchers. And, you know, my question for you now is, out of, from this list, you know, which player do you stand out as the biggest surprise that you really did not expect to see called up? Well, if you look back at the past, Queiroz uh, was not uh, the type of coach who had big surprises. He had very consistent uh, lists of players, the same players uh, called up. And his, uh, uh, at Wilmots also did the same, although his team was not that long. But uh, when I look at the list of Skokic, his first team in list, I see... Quite a few surprises, but the biggest surprise for me is Omid Nur Afghan. 
uh, the midfielder for Sepahan. Well, um, he made his debut in 2018 uh, against Sierra Leone. That was a, a preparation game for the World Cup under Carlos Queiroz, but that has been his only uh, game so far. And meanwhile, he has transferred back from Charleroi to Sepahan, so back to the Persian Gulf Pro League. So I, I guess that Skokic uh, must have followed him. He has seen games of him. So he must see something in him that I am probably missing. Um, despite my doubts about Omid Nur Afghan, his uh, value for Team Mali, I hope he can contribute to our team because uh, right now the midfield is a real headache. Yeah, we've heard that a lot. Yeah, the midfield is kind of a headache right now. Um, and, and, you know, it's true. It, you know, th there's that big need at the central midfield, you know, defensive midfield position. And, you know, one player that we didn't mention on this list, and, we'll, of course, we could just touch on it briefly, you know, Saeed Ezatola, he did not get called up. And he's been playing consistently lately for Vila in Denmark. So that's obviously good news. But this is not something, you know, him not being on the list, this isn't something that, to me, is raising alarm bells. But for me, from my point of view, the player that I find to be my biggest surprise on this list has got to be center back Shoja Khalilzadeh of Paris Police. I mean, he's 31 years old. He's only been capped for Iran five times, but I've always heard about his, um, his issues involving his attitude, how, he could, how he's considered to be a loose cannon. I mean, from his style of play, you know, what he brings to the pitch, he is a pretty good center back. But after hearing for all these years that he has an attitude problem, it became to me one of those things where that I would not expect him to be called up, and now he has been called up. I mean, what do you what do you say about Khalil Zadeh? Well, um, I think Skokic um, follows uh, games of uh, Paris Police and other Iranian teams a lot, so uh, he has attention for these kind of players that get in form in namely the Asian Champions League where Khalil Zadeh has been carrying his team uh, all the way to the final as have we have witnessed it. So I think Skokic also makes the choice based on form. And uh, right now, uh, Majid Hosseini is injured as well, um, isn't doing that well at Trapson Spor at the moment. So uh, he also needs, uh, yeah, more reinforcements. Although Khalil Zade is more, uh, more known to us, but he hasn't played that much. But like we saw at uh, the World Cup 2014, Amir Hossein Sadigi was also a kind of comparable player, and he did fantastic. So yeah, it can be a, it can work out great. So I think we should give him a chance especially in a center back position where our options aren't great either. All right. Now from, you know, going from one surprise to another, I mean, actually I'm not really talking about surprises now. Uh, my next question is, you know, which player, like did you, you know, when looking at this list, which player did you see on this list where you said that, wow, I'm really excited that this player got called up and, you know, I really can't wait to see him play. Who is that player for you? That player for me personally is uh, Mehdi Gaidi because uh, he offers a new dimension to our attack. He's young, he's talented, and from what I have seen, he's quite dynamic, he has speed. Um, well, I think he should uh, be pushing for a squad spot in Team LE, but as we know, there are, Team LE is pretty stacked in forwards. We have Asmoon, Tarumi, uh, Jahanbash also. So the competition there up front is pretty tough. But I think it will uh, help him to get better. And one uh, important thing for me is that he moves to Europe so that he can develop his game further and uh, contribute to Team uh, in the future, especially for qualifying games where we're playing against Arab teams who are really tight in defense so he can open up with his offensive style and technique. And I think the Eredivisie as a league that I have been following a lot in my life since I am born and raised in the Netherlands, uh, considering their offensive mindset, I think that's a league that will suit him perfectly, where a place where he can develop his game. So yeah, I see a lot of perspective in Mehdi Gaidi. And what can you say? Once again, this is something we are agreeing on. He is a player as well that I was really excited to see on the list. And I remember I've been, you know, checking out highlights of him for a while, uh, talking about him on social media. And then 
you have a good amount of Team LE fans that are, where some are saying that he doesn't deserve a, a spot yet on Team LE. You have others that say he does. And, you know, I've been in that camp saying that he does for a while, and I'm excited to see what he could bring to the pitch when Iran plays against Uzbekistan and against, you know, and against Mali. And with Mehdi wow. Ayadi, what I like about him as well is that he's got these really good dribbling skills. And, you know, he's one of those players. He knows how to get himself in the right place at the right time. He has shown before that he has good finishing skills. And like I said, I think um, it's, it, I want to see him play. Am I sitting here saying that he should be starting? I didn't go that. I'm not going that far saying that he should be starting. But he definitely yeah. deserves a shot to play some quality minutes against Uzbekistan and Mali. Again, as we're getting closer to wrapping up this edition of Team Mali Talk, now let's just get to – you know, probably the, the bigger question to wrap it up, and that is, you know, are you satisfied with this list? And, you know, whether or not you are, you know, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I mean, are you, do you have this mind you know, right now going through your head? Have you been thinking that you were disappointed to see that certain players were not um, included on this list? Well, for me, that's the most interesting uh, question where I want to elaborate on. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the list, and I like Skokic's refreshing player selection. Uh, he seems to be eager to put his mark on the team by inviting the younger players, domestic players also, and dropping the older players who have been around for a while, like Sojoy, Ibrahimi, Ansarifat, Reza Yan. I think it's good to have some young blood in the team, new re reinforcements, but Ibrahimi, to me, has been very consistent in Team LA games, so he deserved to be there. But maybe Skokic is just experimenting, and we can might see him being back soon, or maybe even not. It really depends. It is a risk to uh, invite such younger players and phase out older players, but yeah, it can work out really well or just backfire. I think we just have to see before we judge Skokic and his player selection. You know, it's very easy to already start making judgments. I understand that. And I think a lot of people should hold back on some of their judgments so early because, you know, these are both friendly matches. That's one thing we should always realize. But, you know, what about, uh, you know, you know where I'm going with this. But what about Saeed Ezatolahi not being included on the list? I mean, were you disappointed about that, considering he has been getting his minutes in Denmark? I mean, previous years, you know, th throughout these past, you know, previous seasons, there's times where he's really never playing at all and he has disappeared. And it was easy for people to say, hey, you know, uh, Iran's head coach, you know, probably shouldn't be calling up Eza Tolahi. But, I mean, he's playing. I mean, obviously, the Danish Super League is not what you call a top-notch league. But it's still, it still has some good competition. Yeah, that's true. And he has been getting minutes ever since the league has been started in Denmark. But the point is, uh, Skokic uh, wants to give him some consistency by uh, letting him play in Denmark, focusing on his uh, club games, because that uh, will make him consistent and more valuable for Team Lee in the long run, because his club forms the fundamentals of his game in Team Lee. And the more games he gets, the more valuable he can be for Team Lee. And Skokic himself knows as he's talented, he will be part of the team, but for now he's experimenting and he wants to try new midfielders that can stand in for Ezatolori whenever he may not be ready or maybe falling off the radar again. I mean, I hope that's not the case, but he also wants to have good backup uh, options because as we've seen in the Iraq game, the duo of Ibrahimi and Norali didn't work out well. You know, when talking about the central midfield position, you know, I do like Ahmad Nurulahi, and I also do like Ali Karimi of Estegalal, and I'm eager to see how things will work out. I mean, like we said, it's been a while since we've seen Tia Meli play, so at this point, I feel like it's really difficult to be so picky and be so critical about the players that were called up. I mean, I think just first and foremost, we want to see how they play on the pitch and then just take it from there. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, the core uh, foreign league players like Ezatoloi, Jaun Bax, Baron Vant, they will be eventually called up. But friendlies is just a place to uh, learn our strengths or weaknesses to get better. And I think that Uzbekistan and Mali are good 
Alphanons that we can really get tested and get to know our team better. Although it has been a while, so even the two friendly matches won't say us a lot. The thing is, we got to see how things go. But obviously, like any kind of show we do, we always got to have some kind of predictions to bring some more excitement. Uh, what are your predictions for the matches against Uzbekistan and against Mali, Kiarash? Well, let's start first with Mali because uh, I looked up their uh, squad players and they have a lot of good players in uh, good leagues like French and uh, England too. So I think that will be a 1-1 tie against Mali and uh, against Uzbekistan. Well, uh, historically, we do fairly well against uh, Uzbeks. So I think we will win 2-0. And how about you, Art? All right, for my predictions... I'm going to go with a 2-1 victory for Iran over Uzbekistan. And I'm expecting some more offense and goals in a 2-2 draw against Mali. Okay, well, this seems exciting. I'm curious. We're looking forward to these matches coming up for Team Ali, the national team of Iran. Kiarash, great to have you on the show. But more importantly, great to officially announce that it's great to have you part of the Team Ali Talk crew. Thank you so much, Art. You're welcome. And I'm looking forward to Team Ali games and also to our uh, discussion after the game. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you again, Kiarash. And to all our viewers and our audience, thank you for joining us. You know where to find us on social media, at Team Ali Talk. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. You can, go to, you can also go to our website, www.teamelitalk.com. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that notification button. See you on the next edition of TMLE Talk.